10 months of designing, testing, and sometimes failing, this is the result. My electromagnetic accelerator, fully working and better than I imagined. About 10 months ago, I saw an advertisement for an electromagnetic accelerator and I thought, why not make one myself? In this video, I will explain most of the things you need to know about my accelerator and how to make one yourself. To understand the principle of the accelerator, you will first need to know the basics of how an electromagnet works. If you have a piece of wire and apply a current across its end, there will be a magnetic field generated around it. This magnetic field is so weak that we normally ignore it. But if we take the same wire, wind some turns and apply a current across its end, the magnetic field will be much stronger and will be comparable to that of a permanent magnet. Now that you have a basic understanding of how electromagnets work, I can go on and explain how the accelerator works. The idea is that an object accelerates in circles within a track. You can't simply leave the coil always activated because the coils will heat up and melt the track. And even if the track was heat proof, keeping the coils on won't accelerate the magnet. Instead, the coils will let it oscillate back and forth until it's centered in the middle of the coil. That's why sensors are placed before each coil, so when a magnet is detected, the coil switches on and off at the right moment. In my first design of the accelerator, I planned for an iron ball to be accelerated in circles, making use of 8 coils. I planned to use infrared sensors, a boost converter, and the track needed to be 3D printed. It sounded like an easy idea, but trust me, it turned out way more complicated. I wanted to make my circuit all by myself, without copying others. I searched, discovered, and tested multiple sensors until I found one that worked reliably with the accelerator. In this part of the video, I will share with you the design choices I have made for the accelerator. In particular, the 3D modeling, the accelerated object material, the coil and its calculations, and last but not least, the sensor and timing circuit. During the process of modeling the accelerator, I've learned several important things that help me create a steady and durable print that doesn't break or get damaged easily. For example, I found that making the track about 3mm thick worked best. It's neither too thick nor too thin. In my previous design, the track was too thin so it kept breaking. Another improvement in the latest design was making the sidewall higher. Because of centrifugal force, the magnet was flying out of the track. So, I added another 80 degrees on the outer wall while keeping the inner wall at 90 degrees. This made the total wall angle 250 degrees, which prevented the magnet from leaving the track. Another thing I'd like to mention is that if someone wants to redesign my accelerator, I recommend making the segment from the end of one coil to the end of the next coil, rather than cutting the track in the middle between the coils. To achieve best possible efficiency, I calculated the number of windings needed for optimal performance and acceleration. I dived into formulas and theory, but I barely understood anything. After about 3 months, I discovered an online tool called Axle Instrument Coil Calculator, which lets you simply enter the required input values and click Calculate. It's that easy. For my own coil, I used 1.1mm diameter copper wire and wound around 300 turns. I chose those values because the PSU I had available could supply high amperage at 12 volts. When it came to sensors, there were a lot of options to choose from. Infrared, LED and LDR, laser and LDR, induction, mechanical contact switch, and hull effect sensors. The two sensors I tested were the infrared and hull effect sensors. I failed using the infrared sensor because both the track, because of its white color, and the magnet were reflecting the beam and thus the magnet seemed invisible. That's why I switched over to the more reliable Hall effect sensor. 
It detects the magnetic field and outputs a high or low signal. In my original plan, I planned to accelerate an iron ball, but it was weak because the coil I designed wasn't made for driving a metal, it was rather made for magnets, since it didn't have a ferromagnetic core and outer, because that would let the magnet stuck in the coil, unlike an iron or steel ball that would have helped it because of the magnetic permeability. In my design, the transistor switches on for as long as the Hall effect sensor detects the magnet. I've tried to extend this time using small ceramic capacitors, but that caused problems. On the oscilloscope, you can clearly see that the clean signals turns into a slope. And when I measured with a thermal camera the transistor's temperature, I noticed that it increased by 25 degrees, just from adding those capacitors. That's why I decided to leave them out. For anyone who wants to experiment further, a better approach would be to add a small timing circuit before the MOSFET. That way, you can keep the efficiency high while still extending the pulse duration and thus the power of acceleration. This is the schematic of the accelerator circuit. I've used two power supplies to provide the circuit with power. The big PSU, 12 volts 10 to 20 amps, feeds power to the coils. The small power supply, 12 volts 1 amp, serves power for the electronics and indicators. I've used Hall effect sensors that are responsible for detecting the magnet. The optocoupler then is responsible for coupling the sensor and the MOSFET that switches the coil. I've tried two types of MOSFET, the IRF Z44N and the IRL Z44N. Both worked flawlessly. The Hall effect sensor I'm using is the 44E and gives a high or low output when it detects a magnetic field. Flyback diodes absorb the back EMF that kept destroying the MOSFETs. In the process of building and designing the accelerator, I've burned many components like sensors, transistors, voltage regulators, and I even accidentally fried my power supply that I was using to run the accelerator. These setbacks delayed the project, and I had to replace them with new ones. I also made another mistake soldering circuits directly on perf board without testing them on a breadboard first. A few of these attempts failed completely, wasting hours of work and requiring careful rebuilding. Each failure was frustrating but it taught me exactly what not to do and pushed me to improve my designs and timing. These setbacks were all part of the journey and without them I wouldn't have ended up with a reliable accelerator. While making the accelerator, I drew a lot of inspiration from Hyperspace Pirate, whose designs and ideas motivated me to keep on improving. Thank you for sparking my creativity. Your work helped me envision a system that could really work. I also want to give a huge thanks to Acidbyte and Enigmatic Lama for their support and guidance throughout this project. Their advice and encouragement helped me solve problems and keep improving. Seeing the accelerator run smoothly now makes me appreciate how much collaboration and learning went into this journey. After 10 months of designing, testing and learning from countless mistakes, the electromagnetic accelerator is finally complete. If you enjoyed watching this journey, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Your support means a lot and helps me continue creating more exciting projects. And if you decide to build your own accelerator, feel free to email me, you can find my address in the channel bio. I'd love to see photos or videos of your version. Stay creative and I will see you in the next video.